Attention smart shoppers, it's home and garden widget season and widgets to go is your home and garden widget headquarters. Are you really, really gullible? Then call us today at 555 home. It's our once in a lifetime semi-annual sale at widgets to go with prices so low, you know we won't honor them. You've got us over a barrel because we've got to get rid of this stuff before the boss gets back from vacation. So hurry on down to the conveniently located Widgets to Go store near you, where you'll find a friendly, knowledgeable staff. Remember our motto, you break it, you buy it. Limited time offers, completely bogus, credit check comes first. Good afternoon, I'm Quentin Sawatsky with Bot Radio, yes. I am a certified radio marketing consultant with Bot Radio Network, and that's really just a fancy way of saying I sell air. Um, I sell advertising for a Christian radio station. I work with small and medium-sized golden rule businesses. Does that make sense to you what a golden rule business is? So I work with golden rule businesses and connect them with like-minded consumers. So if you're wanting to expand your marketing, you know, come see me. We'll see after I talk about all of this whether you think I'm professional enough to do it or not. So before we get started, I've got some things. I find it easier to um, take notes and learn. I didn't bring pen, so I hope you have some, but if someone can pass those out to me. I've got some notes where you can, uh, a sheet where you can take notes from and uh, we can go from there. While those are going around, let me tell you a couple of things of what we're gonna try and talk about. Um, first is, there's th three questions that we're going to try and talk about and answer. The first is, why should your business be advertising? The second is, what's a good commercial? What's it supposed to do? What's it supposed to accomplish? And then finally, we'll, uh, I'll give you one question you can ask any media rep that comes into your business um, that you can ask them and you can determine if they are there to grow your business or if they're just there to grow their business, if that makes any sense to you. So let's get started about what is, why you should be advertising. Well, there's this book called The 33 Ruthless Rules of Advertising by Michael Corbett. And in it, he says, the 10th chapter is titled, if your doors are open, you should be advertising. And then he gives five reasons why. So let's talk about those real quick. First of all, I think, in my opinion, advertising is a toolbox that tells people who you are, where you're at, and what you do. In the book, The 33 Ruthless Rules, the first reason you should be advertising is people are shopping all the time. There's they're always shopping. There's always something going on. You have to let them know about you. The second thing is people move. There's new consumers coming into Oklahoma City all the time that you need to educate on what your business is and what you do. Third, people forget. Think about this. Between radio, TV, billboards, signs on trucks, signs on buses, signs on uniforms, signs on benches, we see several thousand advertising impressions every day. On top of that, we go to sleep at night. So when we go to sleep, little insignificant things, we forget. It gets, we get rebooted, we forget what's going on the, next, the previous day, right? So we forget. Fourth of all, people take their time when they're buying. See, a lot of businesses have to deal with this pesky little thing called the consumer buying cycle. I know there's four stages of those. It's called, I don't need what you're selling is the first one. The second one it is, well, maybe I do need what you're selling. And then thirdly, they start researching and trying to determine if they really do, what's the best price, all that sort of thing. And then finally, they buy, which is where you want them to be. Now that cycle can range from days to weeks to months to years, but it still is something that we all have to deal with. And then fifthly, the reason why you should be advertising is to establish an equity position in the minds of the consumers. Now on your sheet, I gave you a definition of that. Can anybody t read that, what that is? Out loud. It's on the front page. That's right, when the buyer finally reaches that buying cycle for the product or service that you offer, you want them to think of your business. So, now that I've convinced you you need to be advertising, right? Let me move on to the next question of 
what is a good commercial? What's it supposed to accomplish? So do you guys remember um, the Super Bowl commercial a couple years ago where the kid, little kid was dressed up in a Darth Vader outfit? You know, he was running through the house trying to use the force on toys and household appliances and everything. It just wasn't having any success at all. So his dad comes home, and I don't know if the kid was thinking he's just going to go for the gusto, but he runs outside, stands in front of the car, and uses the force. Nothing happens. So he decides, one more time, I'm going to try it. And he does it one more time, and thanks to his dad's remote start, the car starts, and the kid just freaks out like, wow, it worked. Does anybody remember the name of the car company? Yeah, it was Volkswagen, by the way, but that's a good example of what we're trying to talk about here is, first of all, does a little kid dressed as Darth Vader motivate you to want to go out and buy a car? Not necessarily. The second thing is, you didn't remember the name of the car company, so they also failed at the test of developing an equity position in the minds of consumers. Nobody, it just blows them away. So what makes a good commercial? Well, as you've already noticed, just from that example itself and what I started out with, TV or radio commercial can be as entertaining as all get out. It can be the most well-produced, the most award-winning ad out there. But if people don't remember your company name or they aren't inspired to get up out of their chairs and go buy what you're selling, what have you accomplished? So, what is a good commercial? A good commercial sells the results of your product or service and what it can do for a consumer. So on your sheet there, the first three sells the results and what I want you to do is underline the words what it can do for the consumer and then circle the word do because that's something that you need to do. The key to a good ad is to simply put yourself in your customer's shoes and ask yourself how can my product or service make my customer's life better? That's the key question. Identify a problem and then offer a solution. For example, I have a um, company that does home insulations. Now, not everybody cares about whether insulation is made out of cellulose or not, but if I tell you that you can save 30% on your home electricity bill, well, now I've probably got your attention. So identify a problem and offer the solution. So we've talked about good things uh, about an ad. Let's talk about the bad side, just on the flip side. Please, 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 please stay away from cliches. Now you ask the question, what is a cliche? So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, family owned and operated since 1964. Now while there is some value in that, in that it shows people that you've, you're an established business and that you've been around for a while, most people don't care. Um, it, it, well, everybody uses that phrase. Everybody uses the phrase that family owned and operated. And then they use it so much that anymore it just goes in one ear and out the other and so it doesn't really sink in. So stay away from that. Um, by, the, by the way, this may shock you. As I said, most clients don't care that your family owned and operated. <clears throat> what they're concerned about, and we just mentioned it, is that they are more concerned about how your product or your service is going to make their life better. So focus on that. Um, another one that gets on my nerves is conveniently located. Unless you're right next door to where I am right now, you're not conveniently located in my book. So uh, The next one, friendly, knowledgeable staff. <clears throat> In my opinion, you're just setting your team up for a fail by promoting friendly, knowledgeable staff. Because think about this, everybody has a bad day eventually. Am I right? There's just, it's just going to happen. So if you're promoting on your ads, you've got a friendly, knowledgeable staff. We get a client walks in and Bridget's having a bad day. Well, that person's going to walk out saying, yeah, nobody acknowledged me when I walked in the door. And when I asked where a certain product was, they said, it's over there somewhere. So how is that going to look on your Google and Yelp review? Not so good. So again, stay away from cliches. Uh, just quick review. Tell me again uh, the definition of an equity position. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? It is when 
A person needs your product or service and they think of your business. So the question is, when does a consumer need a product or service? When something happens in their life that triggers that need. So a triggering event can be anything like a hailstorm, Aaron, um, a son or daughter getting married, or a little kid deciding to flush her glasses down the toilet because she just wants to see what it looked like when they went down the toilet. So all those are triggering events that cause people to need your product or service. Now how do you know when a triggering event will happen? You don't. So that's why you need to start advertising your business and that's why you need an equity position. Now I know businesses are afraid of advertising because they think they have to be everywhere every time but let me give you some advice. Find one marketing medium that best targets your audience and hopefully that's not defined as anyone is breathing because that's a whole different story we need to talk about. But find a medium that best reaches your target audience and invest in that one medium. Reach the people you can afford to reach and reach them as often as you can in order to gain the equity position. Something to stay away from. Um, the temptation to, for instant gratification. A lot of people want to get, start advertising. They want to see results like yesterday. It doesn't happen that way. It takes time for people to get to know you, as we talked about earlier. For example, Aaron could buy ads on my radio station four months from now. He's not seeing results, so he wants to quit. So he takes his money, takes it somewhere else, where about that time, my audience was just about ready to buy, but you know, it's the weekend, they got busy. The first part of the week, it was got really busy at work, so they forget. And so they're listening to the radio on Wednesday, waiting to hear Aaron's ad to get the information, and it's not there. So they go ask their friend who they use, and boom, you've lost business. So instant gratification, stay away from the desire for that. Also stay away from the uh, desire to cut your advertising. I understand when times get tough, there are, you have to control what you control, you have to cut your losses, you have to improve short-term results, but avoid the temptation to cut your advertising. In the April 20th, 2009 issue of uh, the New Yorker magazine, there was an article called Hanging Tough that told the story of two uh, pre-packaged cereal companies you've probably heard of, Kellogg's and Post. Now in the 1920s, ready-to-eat cereal had been around for a while, but America wasn't ready to give up on their oatmeal and um, cream of wheat. So when the depression hit, nobody was sure what the uh, consumer demand would be. So Post did what you would think everybody would do, cut their advertising. Kellogg's, on the other hand, doubled their advertising budget, focused all their advertising on this cereal called Rice Krispies. And by 1933, I think, when the market was just cratering, Kellogg's profits were up nearly 30%. So when you get to the point in time where you feel like you need to cut advertising because of economic issues, remember Kellogg's, uh, they saved money and made money during cratering time.